Look who's back. So if you don't remember, this is my 1972 Dodge D100 that I pulled out of a junkyard that it, where it sat for 13 years. I got it running and I drove it out of the spot where it was sitting. I had to put two different wheels and tires on it on this side so they'd hold air and drove it out. Everything went pretty smooth as far as getting it out of there. Started right up. It's a uh, 318 two barrel. It's supposed to be a three speed on the column. Somebody's put it in the floor. and pretty rough little truck. Now I've named him Rump. And what does Rump mean? It stands for Rusty Pumpkin because it was around Halloween time, this thing's orange, and it's obviously rusty. So what I did, brought it home, and we fixed the brakes. We re rebuilt the uh, factory drums all the way around. Had to replace the brake line right there. Put this gas tank in it with a new fuel line. Our original fuel pump actually worked. It's got glass pack exhaust coming off of the stock manifolds so it sounds pretty good it's a fun little truck to drive around still needs a lot of work I'm gonna pop the hood for you guys I'll let you see under it in case you don't remember got the mighty 318 like I said with the two barrel no air cleaner I know we've got that to fix and right here there's our new master cylinder you can see that it's already rusted away so it fits in with the truck now looks like someone had put a new radiator in it at one point and a lot of this stuff is just cobbled together, but it runs, and it runs great, honestly. So if you don't remember, I'll leave a link in the top right. You'll be able to see it. I want you guys to watch that series. It's really fun. We put a new clutch in it as well, because the old clutch wouldn't work, and this thing runs pretty solid. really good oil pressure surprisingly sat in a junkyard and we've got what 35 psi that's not bad really not bad at idle and that's warm too I just got done driving it give you a little walk around real quick glass packs sound pretty good fender shake proper but look how smooth this thing idles absolutely stock nothing's been done to it and it idles like that super smooth love this truck so much but when you call on it let me tell you, it sounds pretty good. So let's talk about what all the things that Rump really needs. Uh, well, first off, we could use an alignment. Wheels, tires, uh, the brakes are pretty good. It drives all right. It makes a lot of noise. We need to fix the side view mirror here, or the window. It fell down. Or actually, I think it shattered. I don't know. It's in there somewhere. Uh, we need to fix some wiring things. The tail lights don't work. Brake lights don't work. Headlights work. Pretty much everything. Dang, that thing's making a lot of noise. Pretty much everything from the cab back needs to be replaced wiring wise. Uh, the original harness is pretty much untouched as far as under the hood and inside the truck, uh, besides a few things. But it just needs a little bit of work and maintenance just to correct some of the things that were done to it over the years by just some unknowledgeable folks but uh we'll fix a few things first thing i want to do is kind of assess why the brake lights don't work
it's dart out so I can work on rum. I'd like to get the rear lights working. One side works, but neither of the brake lights work. We get power to the tail light on this side. We can't, it's over here, so I need to start digging around and wiring. Looks like somebody's doing a little bit of a hack job back here. The best part about these older vehicles, and even some new vehicles today, the brake light switch is a very easy switch to work on. You've got one side that will always provide constant hot no matter what. What that does, you can see you have the button right there. When you let go of that button, that's what's going to open up the circuit to send power. Whichever side is your hot side, it's going to open up the circuit to send it to your brake lights. Whenever you let off the brakes, it's going to close that circuit back. So you can see that it's very simple to work on. All you need is one side to have constant power one side to be the power switch for your brake light so it's not going to be a hard thing to fix it's just a matter of finding where the power switch is supposed to come from in the harness typically it's supposed to come from the steering column which i think i might have found an issue so we'll dive into that real quick but just one more time i'll show you guys that's closed circuit brakes off we need to press the brake opening up the circuit you can see that that switch moves and that's what's opening up your circuit there brake lights on brake lights off. So just without looking at the factory harness on the wiring diagram, I've kind of figured out what I think might be the culprit here. So this is the, uh, the harness that comes to plug into the steering column. If you notice there, one of those prongs is burnt. So if I chase it down to the other side, what do we get? I'm going to use the trusty power probe here. So that red there is a constant hot. The key is off. So that means that there is 12 volts at all times supplied to that. So what my guess is, this right here being burnt up is causing our brake light switch to not have power. So I need to chase down where this wire goes. This black wire looks like it goes up into the turn signal switch, which is where the brake lights actually feed power through. So it's going to go up into the turn signal switch and then come back down through the brake light switch. And it's going to get power that just kind of bounces off of the turn signal switch. So I'm wondering if I give constant power to this, will I be able to make it work? So the fact that this is burnt up, it's a little concerning. I'll have to maybe do some work to that. I might have to get a new plug altogether, which we're in luck. We've got parts trucks so we can get something off of. And this side is still burnt, which we might have to replace that plug too. Not sure yet. We'll just have to see if we can figure out what's going on. But what I want to do, I want to look up the factory harness diagram and then kind of figure out which wire does what. But that's my best guess right now is that this is your power that goes to your switch because the rest of these do not have constant power on them. You can see it light up green. That means if you send power to it, it's going to light something up. But this is power. And guys, if you don't already, I recommend one of these sweet little power probes. They are awesome. I use it to wire everything I own. I'm not sponsored or paid by them, but I just absolutely love their products. So Power Probe, if you guys want to sponsor me, for sure. But absolutely love their products, and I wouldn't do any kind of wiring job without it. What I'm thinking is going to have to happen is a complete redesign of the taillight harness. A lot has been hacked. The original harness still remains. This is all the original harness looks like. And they've kind of integrated into the old harness. Looks like some of these original plugs. But again, it's all sat outside for years and been kind of ruined and whatnot. But we've got wires that don't go to anything. These were what's supposed to supply the brake lights with power, but they don't. And we've got a bunch of wires just kind of hanging in the wind. And 
I'm gonna have to really sit down and diagnose everything and kind of chase wires as they come because like I said they're just all over the place what's happening is we're getting power to the fuse box to this to these wires back here whenever they're actually getting to the tail lights we're losing voltage I'm not sure what's going on but I'm sure it's in some of these old corroded connections here that have just been sitting outside for the past like two decades I'd say and these wires are pretty much shot I'm not sure what we'll have to do we might just have to completely redo everything but that's something we can do and we can do it for cheap we just have to take the time to do it so I don't know if I'll be able to accomplish getting tail lights to work at least in this video so just when I had given up I wanted to show you guys what I found now I did notice this little wire hanging here this was what was plugged into the other side of the brake switch I didn't really know what it was for then I noticed this wire hanging down right here I thought well it looks kind of like a fuse would go there this piece was in here with it and sure enough a fuse is supposed to link in here the spring whenever you lock it in it holds pressure against that fuse I don't really know if I don't think that's factory I'm pretty sure that that's not a factory deal right there I've never seen something like that I'm gonna assume that it's not and it was disconnected but this wire here has constant power to it I'm not sure where this wire is coming from it looks like it's coming from see what what happens here is we've got our steering column our steering wheel is off and I found that you know so like I said earlier constant power is coming to here on this side this is our turn signal switch whenever it makes contact it's sending power back through our column to each individual turn signal and you can see here somebody soldered some wires in here and I'm assuming that this is going to be our, our brake lights so somewhere up in here haven't really dug into it that far yet we had a fuse that was installed at some point you can see the two contacts being made right there that really isn't factory but I think I can make it work so this side is going into the brake light switch and then this wire right here is what will split at the rear and go to each individual tail light so maybe I'll replace that wire or something but we're gonna be able to make at least some kind of power work so well, I'm gonna cut this out just for testing purposes and twist them together that way that I can get constant power without having to fiddle with this and then we'll see if we can make power go to our tail lights all I've done is remove that fuse and twist the two wires together and you see right here it's where they integrated the uh, feasible link there what I'll do is I'll I'll go back and add an actual fusible link and use real connectors but what I'm going to do right now for just for testing purposes like I said tie those two together just so I can get power to the rear so when we take our test light we've got it grounded and we touch it to this uh, wire what do we get power and that's with the key off and that's it should be constant power at all times so like I said this wire here is going up into the brake light switch that I showed you earlier Another neat little feature on the power probe is being able to turn sounds on. So I've got them off right now. Hit this little button, turns on sounds. So this is if you want to make a ground, if you want to make a hot. So we found this wire back here. And as I mentioned, this should be the one that's coming off of the brake light switch whenever it's depressed. Right now the pedal's held down. So if we touch to the wire, not a very good strong signal but it's enough to make the sound go off and again ground power power so I believe that we are good and we want to make sure that this doesn't touch anything bare metal so it'll make any sparks we don't want that to happen so next course of action is we'll clean up this wire actually get some good exposed wire that's not been sitting out in the sun for no telling how long and we'll run it we'll split it make a good connection run it to each tail light or the brake light I mean and we'll go from there so we're making good progress we can make our turn signals work we know how to do that it looks like we're probably just gonna have to completely replace the tail lights though because the wiring is so old and corroded that I don't really think we can make any good power through those wires and so from that point what we can determine is to figure out there's two wires that come off of this thing they're both power wires because these uh, bulbs will actually ground internally. So the tail light assembly grounds to the body and then there are two metal strips that go inside the, the uh, light itself. So two wires come out and we can see which ones are which. So if we light this one up with a power probe, and we light this one up, you can see the difference. Now I've got them twisted together so they're not making a really good connection, but this one is 
obviously a little bit dimmer. So that's our running lights. This is what's going to come on when the headlights are on. When you pull the switch, that's what you get. And here, make both contact. Come on, brake lights. So that's what we're going to run that power wire to that we just found. Again, running lights, brake lights. And we'll make it nicer, a lot cleaner, but you guys can kind of see how it works from there. So we've got a plan and some progress to make. Besides the tail lights, we need to really reassess our wheel and tire selection. As I mentioned, nothing really matches. These wheels are the same. These looks like the factory wheels. This side held air and then that tire held air right there. But that is not the same size as the other three. The rest are 235, 75, 15s. I don't remember what that one over there is. It's an oddball. We've got an oddball wheel right here with three lug nuts. And then we've got an oddball wheel over here with three lug nuts. This is a spare tire off a Jeep. And that's the best tire we got. And it's 20 years old. So if that tells you anything, there you go. We're going to have to really think about what we want to do here because I think the wheel and tire selection will make or break the truck. What I'm getting an idea for though, maybe go with the old tried and true method that we've got on our blue truck. Go with some nice 15 by 8 chrome wagon wheels with a 27560 Cooper Cobra on rump. Not really sure what I'd like to do, but that's in consideration to be honest with you. And the truck needs a lot of work talked about it before but we're willing to do that we're willing to fix a lot of things that it needs and I'm excited about it I really like to road trip this thing one day maybe we'll do a five-speed swap one day maybe we'll do Magnum 318 or 360 I've got a complete 360 with a five-speed behind it that maybe we'll swap in but 318 the way it is is just so solid so I don't know if I'll actually go that route but We'll just have to keep going, you know, that's the thing about it. We have to just keep trucking along, no pun intended, and make this truck a lot better than what it is right now. Alright, so we got a plan forward and what we're going to do with Rump. This is just kind of a catch-up video for you guys. Make sure you didn't forget about him, but we're going to go with a path forward. We're going to fix those brake lights, fix the tail lights. I've got them just rigged up now to where they just kind of work. Uh, just enough to where I can drive it down the road and back without getting any kind of wrecks. But it's not safe, it's not the way that it's going to be in the final iteration. But we'll get that fixed and we'll get some wheels and tires, maybe fix a few things around the truck, suspension wise, do some upgrades. And who knows, we might just go ahead and do a lot of, uh, more stuff besides just fix the essentials. We might do some really cool stuff to it. So, it's next week, we'll probably, the video will be either fixing the tail lights or pressure washing the Aspen. I'm kind of leaning towards doing the pressure wash because that was a lot of fun. And I want to see what you guys think of it because it's going to look really awesome when it's cleaned up. So, We'll, we'll see what happens when the time comes, but it's either going to be one of those two videos. So, Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, leave a like down below. If you have a question for me, feel free to leave a comment too. You can send me an email if you have a question as well. It's at the very end of the video. Send your projects to that same email. Order your t-shirts and your stickers. Hope you guys really enjoyed this video because I had a lot of fun getting run back out. Anyways, thanks again. I'll see you in the next one.